What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of for the Rising of the Shield Hero Season 2. This is Episode 7, and with me, as always, I have Loose Bid. Mm-hmm. Um, so this episode was pretty interesting in, in a lot of ways, because um, you mentioned when we started the season that uh, um, that you, you, you kind of had like some criticism that... Uh, that the title of the Rising of the Shield Hero didn't have any meaning up to this point due to the fact that now Fumi has already risen above, you know, his false uh, accusations and <clears throat> he's already become a hero in the world that he lives in right now. Well, yeah. Now, now, now <laughs> we're um, we're in a situation where now Fumi has to start all over again in this new world that he's traveled to. Yeah, I definitely find that aspect of it interesting. Um, because uh i mean it, it's so i think they all got reset back to uh to level one right like yeah they're, they're, they, yeah. they all are and you know now now for me Rishia, same goes with raf talia in this episode with because of the fact that um that her race actually ages when they level up with her being level one again she's back to being a little uh kid um you know mm -hmm. at the same at the same age in which now Fumi ended up um uh, well, I guess you know acquired her when you know when she was still a slave at the time. Well, actually, technically she is a slave right now, but it's just um, yeah, it's just like now now everyone's uh, back at level one, including quite possibly everyone else. Uh, like like Philo, who's not with them at this point of the story. Yeah, um, yeah. Actually, that's a. I wonder where Philo is, honestly, because like uh, she. She's the only one that it didn't uh, is is not with is not with them. Uh, yeah, it's well. There, there's a lot. I, there's um actually a I lot that was going out. on. Yeah. Uh, so is is this what? So was Philo with them in the source material, or was that also the same where she was not when uh, at this point in the story? Because I know you said you uh you like read a little bit of the manga. I I uh, kind of this. I kind of. Uh, glaze through it while I was in Barnes and Noble okay. the other day, so I I didn't get the full story, but I know. Okay, so because okay Rav, Rav Talia, I, I remember you mentioned yeah go ahead yeah about the yeah Rav Talia. okay so Rav Talia was not supposed to be with Naofumi Rishia and of course the new character Kizna in this episode. She was technically supposed to be with Larkin Glass at this point of the story. So. What I'm wondering is, what if they switched roles? Like, what if instead of Raftalia, it's Philo who's with, uh, uh, with uh, Mark and his group? I don't. Um, it, it's it's con it's a little bit c confusing at times because the reason why Raftalia uh, was with Lark and Glass um, in the light novel and manga was so we can learn a little bit more about, you know, with Lark as a character altogether. So right. like she gets to know about him and. In, in the light novel and manga, the story actually, you know, splits between two different storylines. However, in, in in this episode, I guess I don't know where they're going with this, but I think they're trying to cut down a lot of stuff. Like they have pretty much this, like what they did with the spirit tortoise arc for the last six episodes. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, and, and what what's also interesting is um, uh, in, like from what people are saying like uh, who've, who've read the light novel and the manga is um now fumi never really uh saw raftalia back in her child form when they traveled into the into the next world by by the time uh raftalia now fumi reunited she was already leveled up to the point where she's already um uh, an older an older woman woman again so and which which leads to now fumi uh being a little bit dis disappointed that he wasn't able to see uh, Raftalia in her child form, but now with in this episode, they decided to completely um, flip that script and let now Fumi uh, see Raftalia in her kid form this time. Yeah, it is kind of interesting that they changed that. Um, yeah, I, I I have noticed there uh, are some actual anime original things in the uh, in the anime, like yeah. that in particular. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, they. It's technically it did start by the end of season one when Naofumi becomes the lord of Raftalia's village. However, mm -hmm. um, I did mention this earlier, but Naofumi doesn't become the lord of that village 
uh, until after the Spirit Tortoise arc, uh, because the Queen actually gave Naofumi the rights to the, you know, to Raftali's village after, you know, his heroics and his deeds uh, against stopping the Spirit Tortoise. But they, they decided to do that much earlier, uh, you know, in the anime than they did, than they are like um, in the light novel and manga. Yeah, I know you mentioned before we started recording that you thought the reason that they're making some of these changes is that they want to make the story a little bit unpredictable for the people who I guess have already read the source material. That that's my that's yeah, that's my opinion as from what I can tell because um like the the web the web novel was released first and it's already already done. But um but the light the, the light novel and the manga uh had parts of the story that ended up deviating saying which i'm guessing same thing well it's going with um with how the anime is going right now so it's it's yeah it to me some parts is starting to look, be a little bit more unpredictable but uh but you know the story you know the just you know but the plot certain plot points are still there uh from what i can tell um but um but it you know, it's just like I'm just, I'm just, I'm just still wondering, like, uh, what the reason for uh, these certain changes are. Is you know, is the question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, other than just kind of trying to make the story a little bit unpredictable, I'm not exactly sure uh, what the point could be. Yeah, I, um, I'm, yeah, but I, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll have to see um, uh, where the next part of the story is going to go. Now that uh, Raftali mm -hmm. is with uh, Naofumi in this uh, in the anime, compared to when she was with uh, Lark and Glass um, in the light novel and manga, so it's, so I mean we'll we'll, we'll have to see where that goes from there. Um, but yeah. yeah, so the entire episode was just um, completely focused on Naofumi, Rishia, Raftali, and of course the new character uh, we meet uh, named Kizuna who introduces herself as um, one of the co four cardinal heroes of the world that she's in called the hunting hero. Um, now, like, okay, so, well, earlier on in the episode, we we did mention that, you know, the other three are back at level one and they have to start killing some monsters to start leveling up again, but they get to the point where uh, they come across, like, this powerful enemy which they can't beat uh, due to their low level until they rescued by um, Kizuna soon afterwards. Yeah, and we kind of get to learn a little bit about uh, Kizuna and that she uh, eventually come to learn that, you know, of course, she's also originally from Japan um, and that she was, uh, sh she knows about uh, Lark Glass and the others. And uh, first when Naofumi learns about this, he doesn't really want to have anything to do with her because uh, she's a uh, acquainted her for you know she's they were her former party members um but he eventually comes to uh i i guess comes you know tries to get over that um yeah and, uh, well she yeah. You know, like he becomes well she start he starts trusting her when when mm. he learns that her weapon is unable to kill another person uh, yeah because she, cause she <laughs> the way she uh she's she shows that is by uh like taking out her sword and it's just slight is like slashing him with it uh which of course doesn't do any damage to him yeah um and what we also learn is uh, that they're all stuck uh in this infinite labyrinth and kizuna has supposedly been stuck there for years um and uh, supposedly like she's been there for so long to the point where she almost wanted to commit suicide but uh but then like you know she decided to like just you know just to write it out for whatever how long until uh help arrives so um K kizuna ends up helping them um trying to navigate uh through the labyrinth until they get to this um get to this point uh get to a point in the area where there's a bug it, like supposedly like they're, they come into this room in which suppose, supposedly that you know is it is an exit but they can't get out due to due to um uh due to some restrictions that's preventing him from going out. And then now Fumi like uh, says that there might be some kind of bug that he can uh, exploit to get out of there. So he um, he so now Fumi like uh, takes like this the seed from from her, which he I guess he, he plants in the room, which 
completely destroys the entire room and then just opens up the you know the bug in the wall for that for them to go through it and then get get out of the infinite labyrinth soon afterwards yeah at uh, at first i wasn't exactly sure like what he was doing but i guess it's just a way for him to exploit that particular bug uh which is i guess was the only way they could really get out of there <laughs> um uh but yeah they, they do kind of they do eventually end up making out of the out of the uh the labyrinth that way and uh end up in the uh end up in the other world uh which does like it, it look i guess this world is supposed to be like a alternate uh like a fantasy version of feudal japan or something based on the way it looks uh and also based on the promotional artwork we've we've seen for it um where like it looks like now fumi is wearing like some kind of a uh, it almost looks kind of like a samurai armor or something uh and uh, some of the other characters are wearing some uh similar armor um but uh yeah of course they they break out of the uh, labyrinth and end up there um and uh, kizuna kind of can't believe that she's actually like made it out um and kind of just shows how i guess grateful she is to now fumi um and that's i think it's more or less where the, the episode ends too um uh, i i can guess you know where we go from here is either the next episode we're going to have uh now fumi and the rest of his party exploring this new world uh or we're going to s i don't know maybe they're going to somehow implement the uh us uh, seeing things from lark and uh, lark's perspective or from his party uh, just to see what's going on with them um, because, like, as we mentioned before, uh, Philo is actually not with them. So I'm wondering if they they kind of maybe did some kind of anime original change where instead of Raptalia being with um, with Lark and the others, maybe it's like Philo or something. And that's how we get the perspective of uh, of their party. Um, but I, I don't know. Uh, that is just a guess on my part. Um, maybe they do something like that. Um, but uh yeah i thought as for the episode itself uh, i thought it was pretty good it was a pretty good change from what we've been seeing so far with season two uh with the spirit tortoise arc um yeah i'm kind of interested to see where this arc goes i'm i kind of like that we're in like a different place and um you know that as opposed to the last you know the beginning of this season it's not just about trying to take down the spirit tortoise uh now it's kind of just exploring this new world um so hopefully it'll be a little bit more interesting um i don't really have too much else to say about yeah. it though. I, don't, I don't know if you have anything else to say i mean it's interesting now that they're in this new world but they're already starting starting over from scratch now and also at the same time they're trying to well, that's another thing i like about yeah. it is that they have to try to build themselves back up again um yeah and and of course um trying to explore this new world which um, if I remember correctly, I think um, the people in Lark and Glass's world treat um, Neo Fumi and the other other three heroes like if they're the enemy. And uh, like uh, Lark, Lark, Lark and Glass have uh, went out of the way to try to eliminate um, Neo Fumi and the others to try to save their own world. So I, I'm. It's gonna be interesting to find out like how Neo Fumi and the others are trying to get around this when they know that. They're probably not going to be well liked if people find well, out who they are. Yeah, um, but with Lark and the others in particular, I feel like they're they're probably it seems like they're probably more concerned about Kyo at the moment. Uh, so I don't know if they're really going to try to fight Nelfomi or whatever. They might have some kind of a temporary alliance or something to try to yeah go and fight Kyo. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I could guess, uh, but yeah, like maybe if if anybody else in the world knows. You know, find out about who Nafumi really is, then maybe they would be like hostile towards him or something, uh, which might end up happening. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty good episode. Like uh, I'm kind of interested to see where things go. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, that all being said, I guess until uh, until of course next uh, Wednesday, we will see you all next time.